Well, if Tesla's full self-driving being available for 99 bucks a month as opposed to 199 is not big enough news, XAI doesn't want to be left out either, so they've introduced Grok with Vision. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All, so check this out. April 12th, yesterday as I'm recording this, Grok 1.5 Vision Preview, connecting the digital and physical worlds with our first multimodal model. So this is really interesting stuff. It ties into Tesla, interestingly enough, and it also, of course, ties into Embodied AI. So <laughs> I'm pitching this shirt a lot right now just because I love it. I think it's a great shirt. I'll stand up and let you look at it a little bit more. So anyway, uh, it says 2024, the year of Embodied AI, which is very, very cool. So we can make an argument that this is not embodied, but I think actually there is an attempt towards that. And I think it, it happens right in the title here. We've got physical worlds, right? So it's digital and physical worlds. So they're clearly thinking about the physical aspect of things. My prediction is it is not going to be all that long before we see Tesla and XAI get married, not, not the companies, but that Tesla will start using XAI's you know, large language model or large vision model in their vehicles. And as we'll see, XAI is already using some information from Tesla to help train them. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. First of all, it's a preview. Second of all, we don't have access to it yet, so we're gonna have to look at the benchmarks. I don't really personally care about benchmarks that much. I care about the usability. So of course I will do a test as soon as this becomes available to me to test out. But in the meantime, we can sort of preview what we expect to happen here. So let's read the introduction here. Introducing Grok 1.5V or Vision, our first generation multimodal model. In addition to its strong text capabilities, which Grok already had, Grok can now process a wide variety of visual information, including documents, diagrams, charts, screenshots, and photographs. Notably, we do not get video at this point or audio. They talk about that later in the document here. Grok 1.5v will be available soon to our early testers and existing Grok users, so fingers crossed I'll be able to use it soon. And now they describe exactly what Grok can do. Grok 1.5v is competitive with existing Frontier multimodal models in a number of domains. Frontier meaning just leading, you know, cutting edge kind of stuff. Ranging from multidisciplinary reasoning to understanding documents, science diagrams, charts, screenshots, and photographs. We are particularly excited about Grok's capabilities in understanding our physical world. And note that that's very important to them. And that relates heavily with Tesla, which is embodied AI, right? Whether it's Optimus or the vehicle, we're talking about AIs that exist in a physical world and interact with that physical world. So I think it's really key that they note right here in this paragraph that they say Grok's capabilities in understanding our physical world. So it doesn't interact with it yet, but it understands it. it. Makes me think very strongly. I mean, it was gonna happen anyway, but it's it's even more evidence that, that Tesla and, and Grok are going to get really integrated at some time relatively soon. It's probably already happening in the background. We just haven't seen it yet. Continuing on here, Grok outperforms its peers in our new real world QA benchmark, and they discuss that more later, so we'll hold off on that just a second, that measures real world space understanding. For all data sets below, we evaluate Grok in a zero shot setting without chain of thought prompting. So this is a big deal actually. So one of the ways that people get ChatGPT or Claude Opus or whatever to operate as efficiently as possible and give the best answers is that number one, they'll give it multiple examples. So that's not zero shot, it's multi-shot training, right? So they'll say, here's an example of a legal document. Here's another example of a legal document. Here's another example. Now please write me one of these legal documents and then it will be able to do that. But that's multi-shot training because you're prompting it and therefore educating it how it should answer the question. The other part of this is the chain of thought prompting, which is please explain your reasoning, think step by step, show me all the steps. It's the same thing that your high school teacher used to tell you, right? It's like, oh, I didn't give you full credit on this math thing, even though you got the answer right, because you didn't show me the steps that you used to derive the answer. So it's that kind of a thing. It's like, you know, explain your reasoning, show me all the steps that you're doing. All of that kind of stuff helps these large language models to do a better job. And and they're not doing either of those things with Grok. So since we don't have access to Grok ourselves, we're gonna to have to look at the benchmarks and be satisfied with that for now. So you can see here in the blue sort of column, Grok version 1.5 V for the MMMU multidiscipline, it gets 53.6. You can see that Claude 3 Opus is the best performer. Uh, you know, all of these perform reasonably well and reasonably close together, but Claude is the best in that case. In Math Vista, interestingly enough, Grok actually does better than anybody else. And you can see that because it's bold highlight result here. In the AI 2D test, which is about diagrams, you can see that Grok comes in second here, and it's not too far off from Claude 3 Sonnet 
In text VQA, which is text reading, I don't really know that test that well, you can see that Grok actually wins that with 78.1%, so just beating out ChatGPT for visual. For chart QA, which tests its ability to understand charts, it doesn't do particularly well. It actually comes in last in this, but you know, again, they're all relatively clumped together. They're doing approximately the same amount. For doc VQA, which is about documents, reading documents, you can see that it's 85.6% and Claude 3 Sonnet again, which is, you know, just a pretty outstanding model here is doing 89.5%. So it's in the running. It's the lowest of these, but again, they're all clumped together. It's not doing significantly worse than any of these others. And finally, as you might expect in real world, World QA, which is the test that they actually created, XAI made this for real world understanding. And we're going to examine this again more in just a second. It gets 68.7% and pretty much blows the doors off everybody else except Gemini Pro 1.5. So let's look at a couple of examples that they give us here. Number one is write code from a diagram. You can see from this that we've got, you know, a flow chart, a <laughs> classic computer science thing. You generate a random number, you read in the person's guess. If they, if the two things, if the guess equals the target, then true, you print you one. If it's false, print wrong, guess, try again. And they get to guess and guess and guess until they finally get the random number correct. So a couple of things to note here, this is not a particularly difficult program, but the one thing is they don't really specify anything about this random number. It could be one to a billion and it could be real numbers as opposed to integers. But the important part is that when they give it this image and say, translate this into Python code, it figures out that it should give you a relatively easy random number generator, right? So it generates integers from one to 10, which I think is really cool because that was not specified in the flowchart, but it has an intuitive understanding. If you're going to do a guessing game, it's not going to be very helpful if you do real numbers that can have any number of decimal points at the end, and it could be one to a million or something like that, the person will literally never guess the right answer. So it, it, it could go on forever. And so it has a conception and a reasoning ability that allows it to translate this kind of loose flowchart into something very specific that'll be fun for the user to use. And along with that, notice that the input is guess a number between one and 10. So it specifies that in the input parameters so that the human using it will actually know what they're supposed to do. And then we get to the really cool part in my mind, real world understanding. In order to develop useful real world AI assistance, it is crucial to advance a model's understanding of the physical world, right? <laughs> like I was saying, embodied AI. Towards this goal, we are introducing a new benchmark real world QA. This benchmark is designed to evaluate basic real world spatial understanding capabilities of multimodal models. While many of the examples in the current benchmark are relatively easy for humans, they often pose a challenge for frontier models. And just before we get to the examples, let's read this bottom part here. The initial release of real world QA consists of over 700 images, which is a pretty small data set, with a question and easily verifiable answer for each image. The data set consists of anonymized images taken from vehicles, <coughs> Tesla, in addition to other real world images. We are excited to release real world QA to the community and we intend to expand it as our multimodal models improve. Real world QA is released under an open source license. Click here to download the data set, which is about 677 megabytes. So the really cool part is that this is open and you can add to it if you want to, right? You could improve the set, you could expand the set and I expect it will rapidly increase in size and complexity of examples over time and that will be all to the good. So starting with 700 images is not that many images at this point, but it's a really, really useful start and it's really interesting images. So speaking of that, let's look at these images. So which object is larger, the pizza cutter or the scissors? So they have multiple answers. I guess it's just a multiple choice question and Grok gives the answer. They are approximately the same size. And you can see the complexity here is number one, that the pizza cutter is on the left of the image and the scissors are on the right. Also that the scissors are buried under a couple of other objects. So you have to kind of scan it and you have to be able to retain in your mind as a human how big the pizza cutter is as you look over to the scissors. And then of course you could also probably use a little bit of reasoning on your own end of things. It's like in my experience, scissors and pizza cutters tend to be about the same size. So you can use some of that as well. But as you can see, it's a really interesting problem because they're separated in space and the scissors have things over the top of it. So traditionally this is difficult for a large multimodal model to handle. This next one actually took me a little while to figure out where can we go from the current lane? 
A, turn left, B, go straight, C, turn left and go straight, D, turn right. So what you have to do is look up at the fact that you're in this lane behind this car, but you have to examine this really crappy, you know, left lane must turn left, I think. I think that's what it says over there. But basically the sign is off to the left, it's not over the lane. So you have to kind of rationalize that you're in the left hand most lane in your driving space and that therefore that sign has to apply to you. That's pretty complex and that's honestly a thing that if I was driving under those circumstances, it might have taken me a moment to kind of figure that one out. So in my mind, this is the most complex and interesting result that they give out of these examples. Next up, given this front camera view from our sedan, do we have enough space to drive around the gray car in front of us, yes or no? So notice that they specify sedan because they might've said semi-truck and that changes the <laughs> parameters a lot because all of a sudden you're like, oh crap, that is a huge thing, maybe not. But in a sedan, clearly you can do this, but this I gather is not easy for large vision models because they have to project out a 3D model of the world and understand from that how it's supposed to operate in that world and interact in that world. So even though this one isn't direct interaction, it's predicting direct interaction in the physical world. And I think that's very important. And then finally over here, the question is, given the picture in which cardinal direction is the dinosaur facing, there is a compass down here. And if you look, there's a little baby arrow that points to the east from there. It's kind of difficult. If you blow it up, you can see it a little bit better. So anyway, Grok picks out east and that is a, you know, it's a fairly challenging thing because it's got to look down here at this compass. It's got to recognize that it's a compass, got to figure out where the little arrow is pointing and then realize that, you know, there's a directionality to the dinosaur and there's a head to it so that you would call it east instead of west or whatever. So that's also a pretty complicated thing for a large language model to figure out. And then finally, the future. Advancing both our multimodal understanding and generation capabilities are important steps in building beneficial AGI that can understand the universe. So... <laughs> It's exactly what Elon's been talking about, right? He wants a curiosity engine. He wants something that seeks out maximum truth and seeks out discoveries. In the coming months, we anticipate to make significant improvements in both capabilities across various modalities, such as images, which we already have here, you can see, audio and video. So it's going to start taking in audio and video as well and understanding them as well. So number one, super cool. This is amazing work from the XAI team. Remember this, this company is about a year old right now. It started somewhere around April of last year. So we're talking about a one-year-old company that's jumped into the forefront with all of these other companies and is making a cutting edge model that's able to compete and actually win in some benchmark categories. More importantly, in my mind, is this focus on interaction with the physical world and understanding of the physical world. I think that that is absolutely crucial and very, very important, tails very much into what I think is the most important thing to think about with large language models, which I'm going to re-term LMMs instead of LLMs, large multimodal models. I think it makes much more sense to call them LMMs from now on. So if that term takes off, then cool. If not, I guess people will just keep calling them LLMs, but they're not really large language models anymore. They're large multimodal models and they deal with lots of heterogeneous inputs. And then the output can be text, but it can also be vision. It can also be music. It can also be video at this point. So again, if you think that Grok wasn't doing very well before, this 1.5 vision is really, really cool. It should be a lot of fun to test. I can't wait to throw a bunch of random crap at it and see what it can do, including probably still frames from out of my vehicle when it gets into complicated situations and, and put those in because obviously it's been trained on, you know, auto pictures, which of course XAI has quite the access to from, from Tesla. Note, of course, that they say it was anonymized, so you can't tell what vehicle it was from or anything like that. But I think it's really cool that we're actually looking at training these models, not just on kind of pictures and saying like, can you tell that there's a dog or a cat in there or something like that, but really complex questions that necessitate an understanding of the 3D world from these 2D visual images. So really impressive stuff. Is Grok the best at all categories? Absolutely not, but it's competitive in all those categories. And if they've generated this much interesting stuff in a year, just think what it's gonna be like by April of 2025 instead. It's gonna be pretty mind blowing. All right, so that's what I've got. Hopefully we will all get access to this very soon and I can do some testing on this and actually determine how good I think it is at usability and so forth. In the meantime, we'll just have to be satisfied with these benchmarks and give XAI a big congratulations for making such drastic improvements in such a short amount of time. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.